Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Keras and TensorFlow to run deep neural networks on graphics cards. And it's an installation and hardware guide for R on Windows. There's actually very little information out there how to do this properly. And my target audience are environmental and life science researchers who don't like to use Python or Linux. So I'll let you know what the options are and how to install this. So there are two major machine learning platforms. Uh, they both run on Python. One is developed by Google and the other one is developed by Facebook. And they are both open source, I think, or at least they are free to use. So you can just grab them from the web. The one that Google develops is TensorFlow with Keras. So TensorFlow is a low-level platform that farms out the uh, job to multiple cores on a CPU or more importantly, multiple cores on a graphics card. And Keras is essentially the front end. Those are the neural network architectures that you can call that, that allows you to select what you want. So Meta has a similar platform that's built on NumPy, very fast. Uh, so that's called PyTorch. If you're into large language models or something like this, this is good. But if you're an environmental scientist, you want to work in R, this is better. So the Keras package is actually really nice for scientists, gives you fine control over all the models. And um, there are packages so that you can work in R and use the R syntax. And it just farms it back out to Keras and to TensorFlow and ultimately to Python. That gets the job done there. And then it all the results come back and you can see them in R. So it's a bit convoluted, but uh, it does work very well. And it works particularly well on Linux and Mac OS. So both of these systems are developed for this. Windows really is an afterthought, so you're always a little bit behind in the development cycle, but it doesn't really matter, so these things work just fine. So let's talk about the hardware side. If you are working on Windows, NVIDIA graphics cards are the only ones that are actually supported through TensorFlow. Um, I recommend not to invest too much money into the graphics cards. That's simply not necessary for environmental science applications. Our models are simply not that big and not that complicated that they can't run on entry-level graphics cards. So if you want to buy something new, you really don't have to spend more than 400 to $600 Canadian. So that's 2024 prices. So something like a 460 Ti with 16 gigabyte of graphics card memory, that's really great. Even this one really does the job. And you can actually uh, go back to previous generations. So all these budget cards here, they would be less than 300. I would go down as far as, as a GTX 1080. That's from, I don't know, 2016 or something. So eight gigabyte. That will still do the job. That would still give you a great boost in uh, productivity. So if you want to do the same job on a normal workstation without a graphics card, you would have to spend five, six thousand dollars on a workstation and you can have the same performance for $185. So this is the only thing that matters. You can even use a eight year old computer. This will just be fine. And if you have multiple options and you wonder what should I buy, the first two digits here are the generation 10, 20, 30, 40. And then the second two digits are, are the level. So 60 is entry level, 70 is mid level, 80 is enthusiast level. And for machine learning, my experience is that the generation is a little bit more important than the level. So RTX 4060 will outperform a RTX 3070. And the other thing you need to check out is this, that you have a power supply that uh, can handle a graphics card. So you should have something like a 500 watt PSU, which is pretty basic. Most normal PCs have that. And they need to have one or two PCIe power cables. Also, most of them have that. The older one have a three pin and the newer ones have a four pin. If you buy a new card and you have an old computer, you need to buy also this kind of adapter. So this will work perfectly fine. All of these options that I put here, they are not particularly power hungry. And so in my experience, a regular consumer graphics card really gives the neural networks a big kick. And that is because they are designed to do matrix algebra. So if you've taken my course, the first lab that we did was a little bit of matrix algebra, rotation of coordinate systems. And this is exactly what you do as a gamer. 
you're looking at a scene from different angles. So you're rotating coordinate systems. This is all done with matrix algebra. So these have hundreds or thousands of cores to, that do nothing but matrix algebra extremely fast. So if you're even semi-serious about machine learning, you can even get a kick out of a 1060 or something that you can get for 50 bucks. So I would not miss out on that. Okay, so let's see what we need on the software side to put our graphics cards to work. So you do need Python, and the best way to get a clean install of Python on your machine is with Anaconda. That's essentially a package manager. So Anaconda will come with the Python version. Then we need an NVIDIA software for graphics card support, TensorFlow, R, and Keras. And the versions here that I put on, those work together in 2024. But if any of those are divergent, then everything breaks, nothing works. It takes a little bit of trial and error. And obviously this can change in the future. So I think at some point Keras will be updated to work with a later version of Python. We are now at 3.11. So you have to play around with this a little bit if it breaks. If I find a new combo, I put it in the description of the video as well. So I'll walk you through this in a minute, but once we have installed Anaconda, you can just run the Anaconda prompt, uh, execute those lines, and that will install TensorFlow and the NVIDIA software. And if you don't have a graphics card, you can just go with the latest version of TensorFlow. But you need 2.10 for graphics card support as of 2024. So once that is done, you can simply go to R, install your Keras package, and tell it to use that Conda environment. Now, if this command here gives you an error, then you likely have some incompatibility in your chain. Otherwise, it you can just check that the graphics card is detected. And these commands here, this is some troubleshooting, so you can check your versions and also see if your graphics card is properly detected. So I put all this code in the description, so you can just copy and paste it from there. Okay, let me also quickly walk you through the install. So the first thing, um, you might want to do is check whether your graphics card is um, properly detected. So you can go to the device manager um, and then on a display adapters, you can see whether something is detected. So that doesn't necessarily mean you have the latest graphics drivers installed, but that's generally a good idea to get them directly from NVIDIA and not use the Windows version. So what you can do is you just search for NVIDIA driver downloads pick your series here, your card, doesn't really matter what you pick here. Um, so download it, install it, and uh, that takes care of your graphics card. And next we need the appropriate version of Anaconda. So for this Google Anaconda archive, and you can then go to, to this archive. And so what we need is the 2022.10 for Windows right there. So that one you download. And I've already done this. And right click and then run as administrator. So I think we can accept all defaults here. That you need to do so that I can find it. And this may take a while for the last 10% here. I uh, pause the video for a second. And it's done. We don't care about Anaconda. Good. So now we need to run the Anaconda prompt. Go to All Apps, Anaconda. Then it's this one here, Anaconda prompt, Anaconda 3. And again, you run this as administrator. And we need the three commands that you can find in the description. So first, we need to update the installer because it's an older version. Then we can install TensorFlow. And so this will also take quite a while. I'll pause the video again. Okay, this one's done. And now the last one is the NVIDIA software. Now this one also may take a while. So it's now scouring the repositories for package information and things like this. So this can take with all kinds of problems and failures, but in the end, it'll find what it needs. This is totally normal for Python. So just be patient. Uh, I'm going to go for coffee. All right, it found what it needed. We can say yes to this. 
and I guess we go for another coffee. All right, looks like it's done. Um, we can close this and now we can just fire up R. You can install your Keras package as usual. I've already done this, so I'm just going to call the library here and call the Conda environment. So now this takes a moment because it has to fire up Python in the background. Now we can access TensorFlow. This you don't need to install. This is just handed over uh, into the Conda environment. And we can check if our graphics cards are detected. So this also takes a moment. So there it is. We have a CPU and we have a GPU. That is all there with the correct amount of memory. Um, RTX 4060, so everything is running. Now, if you have any issues with this, particularly with the use conda environment command, so if this says can't detect Anaconda, is it installed? Then check your versions. So you can do this with uh, this command here. So this should show you TensorFlow 2.10 and Python 3.9. And let's see if the graphics card is properly detected. If this doesn't give you an answer, check your graphics card driver. That that's the latest version. Okay, now let's also try out a neural network and see if it works. Well, again, we'll play with the MNIST database. Do a little bit of data prep. And now, through the Keras package, you have access to all the different network architectures. So this is a 2D convolutional network for image recognition. And so we can define our models. We have multiple layer. You can just add or remove them at will. We compile the model and, and specify our loss function. And then we can train it. So again, it'll take a moment to uh, fire up Python in the background. But then it gets cracking. So now we're doing a slightly more serious training round than I showed you in the first video. So rather than two seconds, we gave it 40 seconds. And we can see how the model converged, just the right amount of time. And we get a 99% accuracy this time. So very nice. Now lastly, if you do want to get your feet wet a little bit and try out Python, I can also show you a really nice setup. If you go and search VS Code, Visual Studio Code, you can download a really nice GUI. And I use the system installer here with administrator rights for everybody, but you can also do a user install. So I already downloaded this and let's run that as well. I would definitely uncheck all of these. So just uh, keep the app path here. You don't want your R code to open without this editor. So let's launch Visual Studio Code. It's a very nice programming environment. We need some plugins here, one for Python, that's right at the top. And then we want Jupyter Notebox. You can also just click whatever is at the top. And now you can work with Jupyter Notebooks. So you can open these extensions with um, Visual Studio Code. So this is very much like our studio. You hit control enter, I think. Oh yeah, okay. Trust workspace. Let's do that later. Let's try this again. So it automatically detects the Anaconda environment. It takes a while for the first time. So again, we can see that it detected the GPU. It's very much the same as what gets reported back. And um, so this is the same neural network that we had in R and let's train it. So it's definitely faster than R because R has to hand everything into the background and there things need to get fired up and opened and translated. Um, 
So you're, you're avoiding a little bit of overhead. So this one only took 17 seconds. And let's see what we get in terms of accuracy. Even better, 99.3%. So it's not that hard to also work in Python. This is a nice environment. But if you're like me and you don't want to learn something new unless you really have to, then just stick with R so that recipe that I gave you earlier, that works too.